Hi everybody, this uh, lesson's on direct variation and scatter plots. Uh, we'll go ahead and begin. This equation, uh, y equals ax, represents uh, direct variation, where a is called the constant of variation. Notice uh, y equal ax is uh, uh, close to y equals mx plus b, but b is zero. Can you see a plus zero right here? And that's your slope right there. Uh, a is your slope right there. All right, so uh, write, any, uh, write and graph a direct variation equation that has negative 3, negative 9. This is a solution. Okay, well, since it goes through the origin, because b equals 0 on direct variation, let's go ahead and graph that guy. There's the graph of that. Okay, negative 3, negative 9 is going through the origin. Then we just got to write an equation. Okay, so y equals ax. So you can plug in negative 9 equals a times negative 3 to get a equals 3. So y equals uh, 3x. And you can also see, you guys, it goes uh, up 9 over 3. So the slope is 3 by rise over run right there. Okay, so it's going through the origin. All right, so Hooke's Law states that the distance d a spring stretches varies directly with the force that is applied to it. So that means I have d equals af. Uh, and then so uh, let's suppose a spring stretches 15 inches, which is your d, when a force of 9 pounds is applied, which is your F. So write an equation relating D to F, okay? So we're going to go ahead and plug in 15 and 9, divide by 9, and we get 5 thirds. So three dots, you guys, three dots means therefore. Therefore, my equation is D equals, um, uh, whoops, let me get rid of that. Uh, D equals 5 thirds F right there. All right, so now use that to predict the distance uh, a spring will stretch when a force of 6 pounds is applied. So a uh, force of 6 pounds would be my F, so 6 goes in there. So I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel, and 5 times 2 is 10 inches. Okay, so the dimensions of um, five rectangles each have an area of 24 square feet are given in the chart. So tell whether this, the chart, whoops, let me go back, tell whether the chart uh, uh, it would tell whether the length and the width show direct variation. If so, write an equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the ratios of each width. Can you see 24 times 1 is 24, 12 times 2, 8 times 3, 6 times 4. All of these equal 24 right there. Find the ratio of the length to the width. If they're uh, all the same, then it would be a direct variation. And since, uh, you know, this divided by this, and this divided by this, and this divided by this, since they're not all equal, then this is not a direct variation. So, so um, the answer is no, it's not direct variation on that. Okay, so this example is the same sort of thing. Great white sharks have triangular teeth. The table below gives the length of the side of a tooth and the body length for each of the six great white sharks. Uh, tell whether the tooth length and the body length show direct variation. And if so, write an equation. Well, if the other one was no, I'm guessing this one was yes. So we're going to go ahead and find the ratio of the body length to the tooth length. And when I did that, you guys, this number divided by this, this divided by this, I get, you know, they're all, let's see, this is 119, 121, 120. I'd say they're all pretty close to 120. So I'm going to say, yes, these guys are direct variation. And then so uh, this would be my A, my constant of variation would be that 120. So the body length is equal to 120 times the uh, tooth length right there. Okay. All right, so scatter plot definitions. A scatter plot is a graph of xy uh, points that's on a set of data. So, um, so a correlation coefficient, which is r, uh, it measures how well line would fit the data. Okay, and the closer r is to one or negative one, then the closer that'll fit the data. All right, so uh, go ahead and copy those graphs down right there, and. Uh, uh, and that this one's, can you see this one's going up towards the right? Think of a slope of the line. And if these guys are close to each other right here, then I'm going to say R is close to 1. This is a positive correlation right here when it's going up towards the right. Okay, this one's not going up towards the right. This one's going down towards the right. So that'd be a negative correlation. And as long as R is close to 1 or R is close to negative 1, then these points are much more linear. They're closer to a line right here. These points don't have any closeness to a line right there. So this one, I'm going to say there's no correlation, and R is close to 0. Okay, so the, uh, the table shows uh, the number Y that's in thousands of alternative fuel vehicles in the United States uh, in X years after 1997. So this is, this is 0 years after 1997, so this would be 1997. One year after that, this would be 1998. Two years after that, this would be 1999, and so on, okay? 
So uh, 1999, there should be 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004 right there, okay? So make a scatter plot and describe the correlation. Okay, so there's the scatter plot right there. And, the scatter, and this scatter plot, um, uh, notice it, um, this little springboard right here. This springboard springs me from 0 up to 250 right there. Okay, so this is always my x-axis. So this is my years since 1997, these numbers in the x. And then your vertical axis is always your y-axis, always. Okay, this is always x, this is y. So this is my horizontal axis, this is my vertical axis. Okay, make sure you label everything. All right, and then so there's my scatter plot and describe the correlation. I'd say that one's definitely a positive correlation and, and they're pretty, pretty linear, so r would be close to 1. All right, so procedures to approximate your best fitted line. Okay, draw the scatter plot and then sketch the best fitted line that fits up uh, all those points. And there should be as many points above the line as below the line. Okay, and then choose two points on the line that fits the data. All right, so uh, then write an equation. Okay, so write an equation when you pick those two points. And we know how to write equations. Okay, so... Uh, write an equation for the best fitted line in section G. Okay, so there's the graph right there. I'm going to go ahead and put that line right up the middle. Now, yours might be a little different. Just the one that you think best fits all those points right there. Choose two points. I chose the top one and this guy right here to write an equation. So I did slope y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And I get about uh, 42.2. Okay, and then uh, I did y minus y sub 1. I chose this to be y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1, and I get uh, this equation right here. Okay, and then uh, now we're going to use that uh, equation uh, to estimate the number of alternative fuel vehicles in use uh, in the United States um, in 2013. Okay, so how many years in 2013 is past 1997? Uh, I got 16 years right there. So we plugged in 16 and you get 928. Well, 928 what? Remember, it's in thousands, you guys, so 928,000. Okay, so this means given the data from 1997 to 2004, we can estimate that there will be roughly, and your answers might be a little bit different. Mine were different last year when I picked two other points that were closer, whatever, whatever your lines you picked. But it should be pretty close, you guys, as long as you did everything correctly. So I'm going to estimate there's about a million alternative fuel vehicles in the United States in 2013. Okay, now if you're in my algebra class, I would assign this as your homework assignment, okay, out of your textbook. Take care.